Okay, my friends, Breville Juicer. This is the model BJE 510XL. Has a bit of problem. Uh, doesn't work basically, and there's a big letter E on the LED panel here. And usually, what that means is uh, you didn't push the handle um, into position, and there's a safety switch. There's a little switch here. Um, when that is uh, not open, then the juicer doesn't work. Uh, unfortunately, the problem with this uh, juicer is not the um, it's not the motor. It seems to be the circuit board itself. This is the circuit board. I took the motor apart, and I thought. Um, a lot, of pre a lot of people probably would have the same problem and they would have trouble um, taking this apart. And I ended up taking the easy way out. I cheated and I'm going to tell you how I fix this uh, user. Uh, for most people, when you take apart the juicer, this is the motor, and there's a fuse here. This is the thermal fuse, and this is uh, the most likely culprit for the juicer not working. Uh, this thermal fuse would uh, blow. Uh, ordinarily, it would reset, but if it doesn't, if, uh, if it's blown completely, then your motor wouldn't work. Now I know this motor works well because the fuse is not blown. You can actually check it with a multimeter. The fuse itself is enclosed in a little plastic tube here and you can use your multimeter and set it to continuity and then you just You just push the probe, the probe in there, if it works, you can hear that the fuse is not blown, so the fuse is not the problem. The motor is not the problem. The, the motor looks to be in very good condition. Nothing is burned, nothing is uh, broken. Uh, right, nothing is broken. So this is not the problem for the fuse, uh, I mean for the juicer not working. And then you have the other things you have to check after you open up the juicer are the plastic parts. You can check to see if any of them are broken. Um, on this juicer here, nothing is really broken. Except this juicer consists of just basically a few parts, a motor, and you have the circuit board here. And um, if you uh, eliminate the, the motor as a problem, then the problem would be the circuit board. And to take this thing apart, you basically, this is the bottom, bottom uh, part of the uh, juicer. You just take all the screws out, right from the bottom, right, you just take all the screws out. Um, the four motor mounting, motor mounting screws are all the way recessed in, so you need a long extension to go in to, uh, to unscrew them. And this is the screw, the uh, self-tapping screw. You, you can see there's a little bit of Loctite 
at the end of the screw so when you reassemble them uh, you do well to put some Loctite on it because the motor is mounted to the base with these four screws so uh, since the motor rotates at a very high RPM you want you want the motor to stay in place so take the bottom off the uh, top part is is uh, pretty simple the top part is like this you just after you you've taken out all the screws you can just the whole thing comes out and just pull it out and then you are left with this and if you were to replace the um, oh okay let's back up a little bit when you take out try to take out the, the motor there's a wiring harness this is a wiring harness there's one here um, that plugs into the circuit board there okay. Uh, you can see here, yeah, you plug into the circuit board there where my index finger is. So you just squeeze, you just squeeze on the tap here. Just squeeze on here and pull to, to release the harness from the circuit board. And then there's another wiring harness. This attaches to the motor. This attaches to the motor, if I can find it again, yeah, this attaches to the motor here, right, so you have to use a long needle nose ply to pull it out. So I wouldn't yank on the, the other end attaches to the circuit board, it would be hard to reach. So after you've taken the motor out you're left with with uh, the circuit board and now I'm in the process of uh, trying to take out the circuit board you see here there's a little metal bracket this holds the handle and when you move the handle up there's a uh, end switch uh, there's a switch. When you pull it up, it releases the uh, switch and the circuit closes so you can operate the motor. When the handle here is not uh, locked into place, this switch is closed and the juicer wouldn't operate. So that's a safety switch and in order to take this out there are two screws and a washer like this a screw like this and a washer that holds a bracket to the plastic body of the juicer so you unscrew one screw here and then another screw over here there's another washer and then this can, this bracket can come out. Now there's a spring that attaches to this bracket, so I'm leaving the spring in in place attached to the bracket because it will probably be hard to reattach the um, the bracket. So in order to service the circuit board. Um, you would have to take it out obviously and to do that you have to take out this handle here and to take out the handle there's this contraption here this the plastic piece this is extremely difficult to uh, remove to take out the circuit board you see this bracket goes like this right so you have to take it out 
by removing the two screws and then inside there's another screw that holds the handle and you have to use a screwdriver like this to reach in to unscrew that screw so this can come off so this is where I'm at and after I remove this I'll try to figure out how to remove the circuit board unscrew this bracket and then this handle here can be pulled out and what you do is just pull it out this is just set it to the side and then this front panel here push it in and then you you pull from the inside here you just pull it up you see the circuit board is coming out You have this AC cable here, so you just try to push here to feed it some more cable so your circuit board can be pulled out. This is why um, when I Google on information on removing the board, I read it is very difficult to, to uh, replace the board. And you can see why the board is not just some board that is attached to the side. So, Alright, so I got it out and ultimately I think I would have to replace the board because the fuse, the thermal fuse on the motor itself is intact and uh, if there's a malfunction uh, on the chip, there's a, there's a chip on the other side so at this point I can decide how to repair this I can replace the circuit board or I can cheat a little the circuit board itself is 30 uh, it's actually $42 and with shipping it'll be $50 but then I found on eBay you can buy the juice motor base assembly it's a used one for $35 this assembly here includes the motor includes the circuit board includes uh, all the fuses or Rather, it include the thermal fuse here, and I guess the easy way for me would be just to buy the unit itself. That way, I would have a working um, base, plus I would have a spare motor. The motor itself is a hundred dollars. If this breaks, it will be a hundred dollars. Although I think this is warranty for at least ten years, and I would have all these extra parts. So um, I think that would how I would go about it: buy the motor and uh, just save 
the rest of the unit or parts but at least uh, you can if you want to if you want to replace the circuit board you can do it now relatively easy just unscrew the board and plug and play and the important thing is for most people the failure uh, would be the blown fuse which you can replace for a few dollars you have to find the right if you want to buy parts for the juicer you can go to e replacement parts and you can go to juicer parts and this is the model BJE 510XL and you have the diagram and you have the parts for it and the circuit board this is the circuit board and forty one dollars in change but of course you have to pay for shipping this is the board yeah or you can pay thirty five dollars and buy a used unit and um, and go about it that way okay so I cheated a little but at least um, I know how to take this juicer apart now alright thanks for watching